Hey folks, this is Ardwolf. Welcome. What you see is not the next playthrough series that you will see on the channel. This is instead a one-off video that is as much a tech demo of two things um, as it is a playthrough. However, I am, since I'm sitting here filming it anyway, I am going to play through the invasion turn um, of this game, Normandy 44, from GMTN designer Mark Simonich. Um, so what I'm really testing here is... Um, a, me playing around with Vassal and actually moving some pieces around so, so I can try and get used to it. Um, and two, I am recording this video with a piece of software called Open Broadcaster. As, as the name uh, implies, it is an open source piece of software. I did have to do a substantial amount of monkeying with it to uh, get it to capture the right video, to capture video and the right video in a reasonable resolution and capture audio, uh, despite my Mickey Mouse audio equipment. So um, this is just kind of to get a video in and uh, to see what it looks like, to see how big the file is, to see what it's going to take to in post-production, if anything. Hopefully that will be nothing, uh, but we'll see um, how all this works. So in the meantime, let's do the invasion turn of Normandy 44. So let me first of all open up a copy of the rules. Um, for some reason, some folks seem to feel like it's a secret um, that Normandy 44's rulebook is on... Uh, nor on GMT's website, but it's on GMT's website, so uh, that it's out there is something everybody should know if they've looked at Normandy 44 at all. So I've got a PDF copy of the rules, which I'll keep off screen, and then I will open up the charts here. Now, here's a sequence of play, and on turn one, this initial phase is replaced by a special invasion phase, and then there's a German player turn, and then there's an Allied player turn, and then there's the normal end phase. And then you proceed into the normal sequence of play for the next 21 turns. I believe there's 22 turns total in the game. So let's, uh, first of all, so we can see them. And simultaneously, we want to be able to see the replacement tracks. So I guess I need to move this over here for now. I want to go and see, whoops. The um, screen scrolling and navigation in Vassal is, shall we say, not awesome. So I'm looking for, let's see here, that one. There, and that one. Okay, now, to give you the brief demo here, uh, if you have a stack of counters in Vassal, you can mouse over to see the entire contents of the stack. If you want to select the contents of the stack, the entire stack, you can just click on it and then drag it wherever. Okay. If you want to select individual counters out of a stack, you can double click on it and it'll break the stack up and then you can select individual counters. Uh, and then you can double click on it again to restack the stack. Uh, we are going to need the airborne replacement counters in the invasion phase, so I wanted to put them on the top. Um, in addition to that, let me fix this. The second ranger should actually be on top there and not the fifth. Uh, we'll see why in a moment. So the invasion phase basically consists of two steps. Let's talk about some screen artifacting here. Um, we roll to see the disposition of the Allied airborne landings on the morning before D-Day, and then we roll for the invasion combats themselves. So let's get started here with the 82nd Airborne, and each division that dropped gets its own column on the airborne scatter table. So we will basically roll a d6 and compare that to get a 2. Compare that to the 2 result on the 82nd Airborne. And we see that uh, this unit, the 507th Regiment of the 82nd Airborne, has an S2 result. Uh, so what that means is it will lose two steps and it will be scattered. Um, so we will right-click on it and lose a step. Right-click on it and lose another step. And this will take it down to a cadre. And interestingly, it doesn't place it in the cadre box. Um, however, you don't really need the cadre display in Vassal because you can just add a step here, gain a step, and boom, it'll come right back. And then we will... Now, the, the, uh, the combat strength in parentheses means that it cannot be used to attack. It can only defend. Uh, but because it is scattered, also, it can't move, can't attack, can't receive replacement points, and can't um, form a ZOC bond. Now, because we lost two steps, we get one step back in repl airborne replacement points. Now, regardless of whether we lose two steps or one step, we only get one back. 
um, one step is considered to be completely lost, and the other one goes into the replacement school. So let's look at the 508, and let's roll for them. We have a 6, so they land safely. That is the only result in which they land completely safely and intact. And then we'll go for the 505th. We have a 4, so they lose one step and are scattered. And we will right click, unit state scattered. Um, this particular vassal module, one of the reasons I chose this is because uh, I've A, poked at the vassal module before and it seems to be really well done. Um, so that's the entire 182nd uh, Air War. We now go to the 101st. So let's look at the 502nd Regiment. We have a 4 on the 101st table, so they are only scattered. And at some point in the turn, the scattered markers will go away. Um, I want to say it's at the very end of the turn. It might actually be at the beginning of the next turn. So let's look at the 506th. Go for them. We have a 3. Uh, that is an S1, so they lose one step. And are scattered. Whoops. Mouse seems a little twitchy. And the 501st. We have a six, so they land safe. So that is a actually really good result for the Allied, uh, for the American landings from what I've seen so far. Now we go to the British Sixth Airborne Division. Now what we have here is we have two brigades and a battalion. So let's roll first for the battalion. They get their own column as well, which is the most favorable column. Uh, so the battalion is scattered, but it does not lose a step. Let's go to the 5th Brigade, gets a 2, so it loses a step, and is scattered. And the 3rd Brigade, now this 3 minus, I kind of feel like that means that it's missing this battalion. I don't know if that's historically true. Uh, this guy drops successfully. Uh, you may notice there are gliders as well, those come in on turn 2, so we're not going to get to those in this video. So that is the airborne landing space. Now we go to the actual beach invasions. Now the way the um, invasion boxes are set up, here's the invasion box for Utah Beach, for example. The bottom stack is the stack that comes out in the first wave, and the top stacks are the second wave. Um, so let's look at contents of this stack. We have a tank, battalion, and two infantry regiments. Um, the two infantry regiments you can have, I believe, if I'm recalling correctly, because i got like seven more games in my head right now, uh, the stacking limit is four stacking points, and ground units with combat strengths of three or less are one stacking point, and if it's more than three, they're worth two stacking points. HQs and artillery and uh, tank brigades, or not tank brigades, presumably tank brigades would be a stacking step, uh, but tank battalions do not have a stacking value, so they can stack freely. So this, these three units basically are the entire stackable contents of this hex. So we're going to target Utah. We only have one hex to take here. Um, the invasion CRT is basically a separate CRT um, that's only applicable to the invasion phase, and it tells us how much we can advance. So let's roll. We're going to roll first for the invasion itself. We have a 6, and we roll on the Utah column. That's a D1. So that means the defender takes a step loss. These units only have one step, so away it goes. And the attackers do not lose a step. However, we have to make a separate roll for the duplex drive tanks, because these are special modified tanks that uh, were supposed to be suitable for amphibious landings, but the weather was crappy, so uh, most of them sank to the bottom of the channel, and this uh, is a very forgiving roll, if you ask me. So we'll roll a d6. It's on a 1 to 3. The, uh, the tank uh, battalion loses a step. It does not, in this case, give the roll to 5. So the Utah Beach landing was as successful as it's possible to be. So let's look at Point New Hawk. This is kind of its own separate landing. It rolls on the all others table. So we roll once. We roll a six. And that's a D1. What did we roll? Ooh, we need to look at that. We rolled. Uh, we need to take a look at this too. So we lost a step here. 
so we can get another replacement point. And I want to say we lost one step, just one step from the British. So we get one there. Okay, now let's see if we can figure out what we rolled for Utah, because I think we rolled a D1, which gives us a 2 advance, which means we can advance out of this hex, which means we are going to. Um, I think we're going to, anyway. That was for the tanks. We rolled a 5 on the Utah attack. So that means... Is that the Utah attack? Uh, yeah, that was a six. So I can advance two hexes from here, okay? So the question is, do I want to? Um, I can't overrun here, I don't think. I better look that up. Is 14 point something. Units may advance in any direction and are not required to enter the defender's vacated hex. That's not always true. There's an exception to that. The two hex advance is the default, but there's also a limited advance. No units can advance from one enemy ZOC to another. Now, these sort of curved boxes around the perimeter of the counter means that that counter does not exert the zone of control. Um, the unit can advance from one enemy ZOC directly into another. I don't see anything about overruns, so I don't believe that we can overrun. So the question is, these are static units that cannot move. I think we advance this stack here to exert additional pressure here, because we're going to have a ZOC right here in this hex anyway. So Utah Beach uh, did very well. Uh, I guess the question is whether the Germans have nothing they can really move into this hex. So I don't. I think this hex is pretty safe. So let's do what I said we were going to do a minute ago and go to point to hop. Uh, as I think I said, it, it rolls on the all others table. So let's roll for that. Actually, rolled a six on that already. That's a D1 advance two. So this unit state, uh, this will be deleted. And then the second rangers will advance up. Now, there's a special case for the 5th ranger battalion. Uh, and that is they roll, and we've already rolled it. If they roll a 1 to 3, we place it on point du hoc. What did we roll last? We rolled a 2, so they go on point du hoc. Had they rolled a uh, 4, 5, or 6, they would have gone in with the second wave at Omaha. Now, so let's do Omaha. Omaha has its own table. So let's do Charlie and Dog sectors first. Let's roll for that. Ooh, that's the bad news. But it, it's actually great because it gives us a, 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 the special case on the Omaha table. The result is A1, which means the attacker loses a step. And because this hex is not vacated, um, we have to roll again. This time we roll a 6, so we have an A1, D1, advance 2. So we're going to lose another step off of this unit. Eliminate the defender. And we can advance two. Now, where do we wish to advance? I say... Did we get a second apex of advance off a of point? Of I think we did. Um, I'm not going to look it up. I'm just going to advance... That's there. Rangers of Point to Hawk. One is rolled. Okay. So that's that. And we will advance that here. And let's actually, let's not do that. Let's leave one here. And we have to roll for the duplex drive tanks. We roll a four, so they're actually okay. And they can advance and we will advance along with this uh, our 15th Infantry Regiment. So looking at, do they wish to... Well, I can't go back and move these guys here now because that would be... 
um, so that I can advance it to combat in here. Because um, I've already now seen that we get a 2x advance out of Omaha. Then we have a ZOC bond. You know what? We have a ZOC bond between this hex and this hex. Now this is kind of one of the special features of this game and its sibling games. Because there's two hexes with a hex between them here, that means that this hex side is not crossable at all by enemy units. Uh, now these units have to uh, have a ZOC, uh, but they do. Um, so this hex at Deerville uh, is protected from this unit right here. We certainly don't want uh, these units getting back out of the beach and cut us off. So let's roll for easy and fox sectors. We roll a four on the Omaha table. And we get an A1D1, so the defender is deleted. We use a step off of this. And that's a four, and that's an advance one. We roll for the tanks. We roll to three, so they lose a step. And you notice that they now don't throw a ZOC. So that could have been worse. So let's move to the British sectors. And start with Gold Beach. Uh, let's see. I'll pull the tanks out. Okay, so let's do Jig Sector first. And these guys get the All Others column. They roll a 6. They are D1, Advance 2. So they will go here. And they will advance. And then let's see. We'll advance here. They'll go here as well. Let's roll for the tanks. They do lose a step. But they still have a tank value, and if we were to play through more of the game, we'd see why that's valuable. Um, in King Sector, let's roll for that. We got a 4. That is a A1D1 advance 1. So we'll delete this. We'll move this guy over here. We'll lose a step off of this unit. Well, for these tanks, they lose a step as well. So the user interface is pretty easy, um, but you do have to kind of make sure you have selected what you think you have selected. Either that be an entire stack or multiple stacks or whatever, and I can select multiple stacks here. Um, so that went pretty well as well. And then we go to Juno, the Canadian beach. Let's again pull out the armor. We have armor here? Yeah, we do. This is a special services brigade. So let's go to Mike's sector first. We roll a three. That's an A1D1 advance one. So what we got. So we'll lose a step. Delete the defender. Put these guys in. We will roll for the tanks. They will lose a step. Things aren't going well for the tanks, but things historically did not go well for the tanks. Um, so Nan sector. We roll yet again a 3, A1, B1, advance 1. So the defender is eliminated. We'll lose a step off the infantry unit. Roll for the tanks. We again lose a step. And do I add replacements for these units? That's a good question. Uh, I think so. Well, let's assume that, that since we're probably not playing out a whole game here, we're going to ignore that. I think we would track replacements, losses off of these units. Um, the direct drive units, maybe not, but uh, the rest of them, I think we would. All right, so we've got these units coming into uh, Sword Beach. Let's roll for that. We have a three, which is once again an A1D and an advanced one. We'll delete this. We'll lose a step off here. Let's go in. Let's look at the six. So we actually don't lose a step off the tank. So that's good. Uh, we do also want to clear the beaches. We want to clear space on the beaches to make room for the next wave. Um, because we're basically at stacking units for the most part here. Um, so, uh, but we do we have a whole ally turn in which to do that. So that is the entire invasion phase. 
hopefully this has been fun, but like I said, this was more of a tech demo, and stay tuned uh, to the channel for an announcement in the next uh, couple of days uh, with a very brief video uh, talking about what I'm going to be doing in the month of February 2016 for playthrough videos on the channel, and I'm very excited about that. So thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.